Teko couldn't go on. It was too dark. The Wakcha had taken Yaka inside the temple. Teko had to find a way to activate the bridge again so he could cross. It seemed like the bird had stolen the egg from the statue. Those people were making offerings to the temple's cultists to avoid reprisals. If Teku left an offering like that, they would activate the bridge to pick it up 
and he'd be able to sneak into the temple.
Again? How had he got there? Teku preferred not to ask. Machalaku, chalaku, make chukutubu, epeko. Mambalaku, chupita caca, chitipi, chipote. Chocoma, y que tú chupota. Thank you. 
Café, Batata Chumpa. It didn't fit. The symbol on the stone didn't match the one on the door.
Teku was surprised to see that the Wakchas had also been taken prisoner. Something very strange was happening.
Then Teku found him. The huge creature Tezka towered over him on a great throne. Peals of laughter echoed throughout the temple. He appeared to have lost his mind. It was terrifying. Thank you, my son. Don't worry, I'm fine. Let's go. We have to free the others. This is the mechanism that opens the cells. Get on the other side. We'll try to activate it between the two of us. prisoners were escaping through the window, Teku turned to the shaman. He could tell that something was happening, something strange. Why were the Wakcha being captured and sacrificed like everyone else? Who were those strange hooded ones guarding the temple? Teku couldn't understand why his enemies would worship a creature that was annihilating them. But above all, he asked himself why the gods had created this monster who obliged them to commit terrible acts. Yaka waited until he was alone with his apprentice to answer his questions. He was clearly suffering and uneasy, like someone carrying a heavy weight that is about to crush him. He put his hand on Teku's shoulder and sighed before starting to speak. The Wakchas are not our enemies. They are behaving this way for the same reason our ancestors boarded ships and crossed the sea. They do it out of fear. Out of fear, they capture new prisoners and offer them up to Tezka. They fear that if someday they stop performing these sacrifices, the creature could come down from the mountain and raise their villages. The moment they took me prisoner, I understood. A tribe like the Wakcha would only dare to cross the sea in a case of desperation. The worshippers of the creature were demanding a new tribute, to sacrifice the shamans. In their madness, these fanatics didn't want anyone to share the power the gods left on Earth. That way, all the secrets of the light and fire would belong to Tezka. They are the hooded ones you saw in the temple. There is something, Teku, an ancient secret that I shouldn't tell you. But here we are in the great wooden temple, centuries after our ancestors abandoned it. 
Now I can see things more clearly than ever. And I realize what madness it has been to conceal it for so long. Tesca's birth wasn't the work of the gods. We created him. Teku turned pale. He couldn't believe what his master was revealing. His head was spinning, and a mixture of anger and fear invaded him. This is the secret the shamans have passed on to their successors, generation after generation. It all began when the wars started to break out again in the world. It was the dawn of the fifth creation, and we were again headed towards committing the errors of the past. To avoid the ire of the gods, the shamans decided to bring forth all their power in the world. They met in the temple, and out of the secrets of light and fire emerged Tesca. They thought that if a higher being that people could see and worship walked alongside them and guided them, they could put an end to the violence. And it worked. At first, the creature brought people back together, and they built cities and became wise again. But Tezga was the work of them. And like them, in his heart, ambition and greed was starting to gestate. The dances and rituals ended up convincing the creature of his own divinity. The more the tribes worshipped him, the more his madness and greed increased until he turned into the monster that today lives in the temple. That luminous and wise being turned into a portrait of the worst of ourselves. The rest of the story, you already know it. I'll go on ahead. I'll wait for you up top. there was a small hole. It seemed that a sphere of the right size might fit there. Teku remembered having seen one somewhere. Balacón, chupita caca, chitipe, chipote. Mingo alpaca, chocoma. 
Activate the altar! Oh, Teku, the fire of the gods is burning on the mountain again. And now what? asked Teku. Now, now comes the most difficult part, starting over. The world as we knew it has ended. The tribes will be at peace once more, and our people will no longer have to hide. But most of all, we must not let our errors be forgotten. We will rebuild our village, Teku. The fire of the gods must burn again in the temples. So today, this tiny candle you're holding means more than ever before.
Thank you.